In the top stories, the finance minister says the economy is stabilizing as he launches the estimates debate. A call for Barbados to use events to spur more year-round tourism and Andy Thornhill previews inter-school sports. Welcome to Nation News from Monday, March 16th, 2015. I'm Natasha Beckles. No matter where you are in the world, at home or abroad, Nation News keeps you connected with what's happening in Barbados through our website, video newscast, and online e-papers. So stay connected with Nation News. Your news, your time, your way. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair launched the 2015 estimates debate in the House of Assembly on Monday morning, saying it's clear that the economy is on the rebound. He said this was evident with tourist arrivals from most major source markets up, energy prices down, inflation at 1.9% and the deficit cut to 6.7%. With the government expecting a surplus of $56 million, Mr. Sinclair said all this is proof that the 19-month fiscal adjustment program is working. In his two-and-a-half-hour presentation, the minister said there is still more to be done and he called on Barbadians to stay the course that would put the country on a sound financial footing. You may recall Tourism Minister Richard Seeley saying Barbados is on its way to having a year-round tourist season. Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association CEO Sue Springer spoke to Nation News reporter Carlos Atwell. Barbados is getting to the point of having year-round tourism. This from new Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Sue Springer. Springer said it was just a matter of capitalizing on what Barbados already has to offer as well as coming up with new ideas. We are already getting to the point of being year-round. Of course there's always going to be an improvement if we can be at the occupancies that we have enjoyed this January and February for the whole 12 months of the year. Of course that would be absolutely amazing and that is obviously what the Minister is referring to. And this can be done in many ways. The um, BTMI have looked at events, we've looked at heritage, we've looked at food events, we've looked at festivals and so on. But one thing about Barbados is that we have really natural things that can be done and enhanced. For example, let's look at this last weekend. Um, we had the Gold Cup and we had the Polo and so on. Who says there couldn't be mini breaks for people even coming from um, U US? This is actually an idea from Petra Roach, the director of marketing from BTMI. And um, she said, you know, they come in on Thursday night on the red eye with, uh, with JetBlue. Friday go and have a nice relaxing day on a catamaran cruise, Saturday go to the Gold Cup, Sunday go to the Polo, go out for dinner in the evening, go back on the Red Eye uh, the week, and they've had a lovely short break, mini breaks. Those mini breaks multipl multiplied out can be amazing and we can do it for so many things. We've got so many things going on in this country that we really do not expose. Opposition MP Dr. Maria Agard has told the Barbados Labour Party not to get carried away by the results of a new public opinion poll that favours it to win an election if one is called now. Addressing a meeting of her Christchurch West constituency branch on Sunday, she said polls did not always accurately reflect the state of political play in the country. Now you know that a poll, based on its methodology, can prove or disprove the same concept. So polls really and truly are the property of those who sponsor them and who structure the questions for them. Because sometimes we want a particular response. Results from the cadres poll were published in yesterday's Sunday Sun. Democratic Labour Party General Secretary George Pilgrim dismissed the survey, calling it a ploy to sell papers. Investigations are ongoing into a police-involved shooting which left one man dead and another injured on Sunday. 57-year-old Selwyn Knight of Queen Mary Road, Bank Hall, St. Michael, met his death just before 7 a.m. while his son was rushed to surgery following the incident. According to reports, the two men were chasing an alleged burglar along Dash Gap Bank Hall when he darted into the house of a police officer. Gunshots rang out and Mr. Knight was found lying face down in the road while a handcuffed man sat on a step. Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch said two men were in custody in connection with the matter and a senior lawman has been assigned to investigate. 
Government is amending the laws governing the Fair Trading Commission, giving it more power to protect consumers. This was revealed by Minister of Commerce Donville Innes during the FTC's recent lecture. He said one of the changes will give the Commission the power to investigate complaints against telecommunications providers other than cable and wireless, as well as independent power producers in the electricity sector. Mr. Innes said telecommunications laws have to keep up with other developments in the industry. Last November's announcement of the proposed acquisition of Columbus International by Cable and Wireless Communications was met by some level of alarm by the general public. However, as I indicated at that time, greater importance must be given to the, te te to the telecommunications sectors uh, framework to determine if the regulation and legislation in place has kept pace with the industry's development. It is my firm belief that in telecommunications, as in all other sectors, the focus must be placed on effective regulation to ensure that balance is preserved within the marketplace and the protection of consumers is maintained. In sport, the secondary school's athletics championships will get underway on Wednesday at the National Stadium. Are you bold enough to call a winner? Andy Thornhill can. Question. Will Springer Memorial retain the BSA championship? I think they will. Perhaps they will not have more than one individual on track who will dominate. They'll be looking again to crack sprinter Tristan Evelyn to do that for them to set the tone. And I think she will win the 100 meters and the 100 meter hurdles, possibly second to Shadia Williams in the 200 and off track. I think she has a good chance of also winning the long jump. Shantae Seeley is perhaps their best chance in the field events among the under 70s. So what I'm seeing in essence is that Springer again will bring the balance. That's what they always do to appoint the opposition. Who will be their strongest challengers? I think the St. Michael School will be the ones they have to look over their shoulders for. And not forgetting the improving Foundation School who made some good acquisitions during the new school term. Andy Thornhill for Nation News. The International Cricket Council has announced that this year's annual conference will be held in Barbados from June 22nd to 26th. It will be the first time the meeting takes place in the West Indies and delegates from over 50 ICC members are expected to attend. In the meantime, the focus remains on the field as West Indies gear up for their Cricket World Cup quarter-final clash against New Zealand. Captain Jason Holder has been talking about their chances. Once we take our boxes in terms of getting early wickets with the new ball, as we've been doing in this in this tournament, I think we can put some pressure on them middle order, you know. Um, I think they've, they've done reasonably well up top with guys like Gattel, you know, McCullen, and also Kane Williamson. So I think if we get into their middle, middle order as quickly as possible, it would be better, better off for us, you know. Whenever we're back, we just obviously have to, you know, counteract the, the ball and Saudi combination. Jason, how important will it be to get Chris Gale back into the equation for the quarterfinal, and is he looking like he will be? Well, I mean, uh, Chris had the same back problem as, you know, over the, over the last year and, you know, something he has good days, he has bad days, you know. Um, obviously, he's a, he's a key player for us, you know, and his fitness is key um, going into the quarterfinal. I'm sure he'll be up for it, you know, even if he's not 100%, you know, he'll push through it, you know. It's an important game and he's a big player and, you know, what big players can do on, on big days. West Indies moved past the group stage by beating United Arab Emirates by six wickets. They will take on New Zealand on Saturday. And finally, authorities in Florida say a cell phone thief accidentally shot himself in the leg, then stole a Mercedes from a strip club, only to flag down a sheriff's deputy when the pain from the gunshot wound became too much. He was taken to hospital for treatment and then, of course, charged with armed robbery and possession of a stolen vehicle. But at least he has his health, right? That's where we are in Nation News for Monday. For more, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Remember to pick up your Daily Nation on Tuesday or subscribe to our e-paper. Thanks for joining us.